Hey everybody, Matt here from Everyday Astro. I'm sorry it's been a while since I posted a video, uh, but unfortunately I have had nothing but cloud and rain as this video shows. But it has given me an opportunity to stop and have a look at my setup. For those who remember the video I posted a few months ago, looking at my setup for the next 12 months, you'll remember I'm trying to run a second rig this year, and that hasn't been as easy as you might think. It mostly it's the software to drive it. I'm trying to use two Skywatcher mounts going into one piece of software, and it doesn't seem to particularly like it. So I've decided to do something a little bit different, and I've added the ZWO ASI Air onto my setup. If you don't know what an ASI Air is, pretty much think of it as a laptop in a very, very small box. So this has all the software I need to run all of the equipment you can see behind me. It operates the plan that you're going to shoot that night, it does the guiding, it does your polar aligning, it allows you to focus your images, it does everything that you need more or less for you and it is all controlled from either a smartphone or tablet. So it does mean it's controlled completely separately from any other device that you've got running, which I think is great because now I attach this to the my rig and the only wire I have going to or from that rig is the mains power that, that gets it all going. So it is a completely standalone setup that I have now. It also fits really quite conveniently onto it. So I have bought this extra dovetail that goes onto the back of, or extra clamp even, that goes onto the back of the uh, ASI Air. And that allows me to put it onto my, um, to my space cap. And uh, I'll get the words out eventually. Uh, it does mean I can just attach it to the dovetail of that space cap and it keeps it very tidy. In fact, it looks something like this. So I thought it'd be worth just spending 30 seconds just showing you what it's powering and how everything is connected. So the box obviously is uh, at the front and then attached to my space cap. And I have three USB uh, cables coming up here. So one of them is the um, storage drive. This is what the image is saved to, uh, which easily makes it transferable to a laptop as well, which is great. You just take that out, plug it into your laptop and the images move with it. The uh, ZWO ASI 294MC Pro is plugged into here and the EQ mod cable is plugged into the mount itself. Uh, on the other side that you can't quite see is three power cables. So one of them powers the mount, the other one powers the camera um, and the third one powers the dew strap. So both dew straps with a, a splitter on that to allow it to do both. Um, and so all of my power and USB distribution now comes from this one box. And there's just one cable that comes out the bottom underneath here, if you can see it, and that's the power cable. And that is all there is to it. My setup is now set up. I can literally leave it like this and just carry it wherever I want to go. Um, and I can also get a power adapter that would plug into a power tank. So I could also make it a good mobile solution as well. So that's how it all attaches. Now let's have a quick look at the software that actually goes with it. So I said this is controlled from either uh, an iPhone or an Android or an iPad or any other tablet that you want. There isn't any way that you can control it from a PC at the moment, unless you're using something like an Android emulator. Um, but let's have a quick jump in and we'll just have a look around the software uh, and how it all works. So when you first load it, this is the screen that you're going to see. It's going to give you a number of options to make sure it's okay. Uh, for example, it will allow you to select which mount that you want. It allows you to put your focal lengths in, what camera you want to use as your main and guide camera, and your date, time and long latitude on the left. And then you just hit enter to actually enter the system. And I'm just going to move this bit on the right out the way for now. We will come back to that and look at these options on the very left of the screen. So histogram is the first one you can see there. When you press that, it simply brings a histogram chart up at the bottom. Guide brings up your guide chart so you can see what your guiding looks like. Uh, the tools at the bottom give you a couple of other things. And obviously normally plate solve would be there as well, but there's no image to solve, which is why that's not there. Across the top here, we've got the settings uh, that go through. So you can see here in the main settings tab, it just is more or less just basic stuff just to actually run the system itself rather than anything to do with your imaging session for the night. Um, and you can also, if you come out of that, you can then go into the camera one at the top and also they're on the left hand side there as well. You can kind of see those same things. So you can see I've got my 
ASI 294MC Pro as my main camera, 246mm focal length, my gain at 127, I can turn cooling on, I can either select one of those boxes or use the slider that's there. I could do things like customize the file name if I wanted to as well. So these are all the kind of things that you find within the uh, actual settings for the camera. So uh, after the camera, the next one that is there is the guiding options. So again, I have my uh, ASI 120mm as my guide camera. I've got its focal length gain, the calibration steps, um, and things like that. You know, it's, it's, again, it's fairly basic settings as we go through there. So you just look at the time out there and, and the stability that goes through. Um, but it's all quite normal. The other one that's quite important is your dithering. Make sure that is on. I dither every four frames by 10 pixels. Um, and then obviously you've got the telescope one. So I said I'm connected by the EQ mod. It gives you all the latitude and longitude. It allows you to sync what your phone thinks you're at to the mount, which is very, very handy. Um, you can also look at your center exposure times, the guiding rate, and you could turn the tracking on from here as well. Do remember to turn tracking on because uh, otherwise you won't be tracking when you're imaging, which is slightly annoying. So always, just before you hit go on the plan, make sure that's on. I don't have a filter wheel or focuser on this particular setup, uh, so we'll skip over those to the storage settings. As you can see, I'm not using the SD card that's in it, I'm using the USB stick that I've added into it. Um, and at the bottom, there's just a few things that are about the system. So that's most of the ones over the top. On the right here, so we've had this little pop out that we put in earlier. As you see, this allows you to manually put the coordinates that you want to and go to. You can use the up, down, left, right as well to also control the uh, system if you want to do that. Um, and obviously the last bits are on the right. So if you press on the preview, it brings up this list of different ones. So focus is the first one here. Now, see if you were taking an image here, you would have stars in it and you'd have this little green box that you can move around. Center that onto a star. So let's pretend there was a star here. You would then be able to hit the plus button that's now appeared on the left-hand side in the circle. And that would then zoom into the star and allow you to get fine focus to make sure it's as good as possible. You also have PA for polar aligning. Uh, I say I will go through this in the next video, but it's a really, really good way of doing polar aligning, and it pretty much does it itself. Preview is self-explanatory. Um, the only other real key one in here I find is the plan. So the plan is what you're actually going to use to shoot your images for the night. So if we pop in here, this is, this is a previous one I've done on the, the Cygnus loop. Um, you do have to kind of get used to this, but I mean, it's obviously fairly straightforward here. It's got the target name. It's, it's um, where it is in the sky at that particular time. Uh, this one was from the flat frames that I had uh, done before. Um, and remember, before you can kill anything off, you do need to reset the plan first, so it won't let you do anything. So hit the reset button at the top right there, and then it says, are you sure we want to get rid of everything? Yes, I do. And let's create one for tonight. So this gives me all the stuff that is best for me to capture. Um, I obviously can just search as well if I want to search for anything, um, but I'm just gonna randomly pick one of these because it's gonna be plenty of options, but there's Andromeda. Let's, let's have a selection on Andromeda and just hit the choose button. So it now puts all the details in for M31 and we have the smaller box to the right. But since it's gonna allow me to do a new sequence, so I wanna do light exposures, but actually I've decided I want to do 240 second exposures. And I think that if I was going to do that, I would probably want to do say 50 of them. So I'll put 50 in there, bin one and just hit okay. So now I have my light plan set up. Uh, I can literally just come back out of that again and I will be able to go back to the main screen again. So once all I would have to do is, is just hit that white button on the right that looks like your normal camera shutter button for, for your iPhone, um, and that is literally all you have to do. And that is literally all there is to the ASI Air. I've been really impressed by the simplicity of it. I also think it feels well made. I think it looks good attached to my rig. So, you know, all those things are just bonuses, but that simplicity has just been great. And I've managed to take a couple of images with it so far, and I've been really pleased with the result. Now, it's probably not surprising. Generally, I think it's the scope and camera, obviously, that makes the most difference there, but the software does have an effect. So in a second, I'll share those first two images, but that is all I really wanted to cover for this one, just having a look at what I've got, how it's changed my setup. 
and more importantly, how the images look at the end of it. But what I'll do in the next video is, as I'm setting up next time, I'll get all the video running for that, and we'll actually go through step by step how we're going to actually get my rig up and ready, polar aligned, focused, and all those other things. We'll set a plan up for what I want to do, which will probably be Andromeda, and then we will go from there and actually see how it works in the real world. But I hope that's been helpful as a quick introduction to the ASI Air. So I've really enjoyed using it so far. I can honestly recommend it as a great piece if you are looking at running that standalone rig. It definitely isn't as powerful as things like Nina, but it doesn't need to be for a second rig, especially one with a very, very short focal length either. So I think it is really good if that's the kind of area that you're looking to get into. Uh, but obviously if you have any comments or questions on it, do feel, leave, feel free to leave them below and I will try and get back to as many as I possibly can. And until I finally get some clear skies, clear skies to you. Mm -hmm.